Hello Pokemon trainers, welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video here on iStarly TV. Today I'm doing something a little bit differently. I, I did a video like this, or I, I did videos like this, you know, a little while ago, but I thought I'd kind of bring this little mini series back to the channel because I'm really interested in this topic. But as you can tell, we are talking today about the top 10 Pokemon in the Battle Stadium singles Regulation F meta. We are just about two weeks from the release of Battle Stadium Singles Regulation F, so it's been about two weeks in this, since this new format started, and we're starting to see kind of which Pokemon new and old are kind of rising to the top, so I definitely wanted to talk about that, the state of the meta effectively. So I'll be talking about the top 10 most used Pokemon. I'll go into some detail on some of them, maybe ones that I find to be a little interesting here. Um, and then we'll also talk a little bit about some, you could call them honorary mentions. Uh, I guess real quick, I'll, I'll just kind of mention those Pokemon. So we're focusing on the top 10 Pokemon in this video, but we have here number 11, 12, and 13, Primarina, Latios, and Archelodon. So these are some of the best Pokemon in the meta right now. Uh, and honestly, if you, if you asked me before the season came out, which Pokemon I would expect to be like in the top 10 or top 13, or top 15 or whatever, these are Pokemon, these three Pokemon here would be ones that I wouldn't have probably guessed. Though looking at their attributes, I probably would have noticed that like, yeah, they look pretty good. They look like they have a lot going for them, but I, I don't know that I would have put them this high up. So these three Pokemon here are good in the meta if you want to use them. I, all three of them are good users of the Assault Vest item. I think a reason for this, they're all special attackers, which is important to note. They're all pretty bulky as well. Um, and then something like Latios is a lot more offensively inclined. Like its defensive typing is kind of bad to be honest, but it has a lot, a lot going for it as well. So yeah, I just wanted to point out that these are three Pokemon that you maybe wouldn't expect to be very good, but they are. And now let's get to the top 10 here. And like I said, I might not go into too much detail for all of these Pokemon. I'll have a graphic here on screen so you could kind of just visualize the top 10 just right off the jump. And I will also say I'm using the Pokemon Home app on my phone. So I, I if, if you're interested in this type of information, I, I highly encourage you to download the Pokemon Home mobile app. Uh, not sponsored, <laughs> this is not sponsored, but it does give you this information like the, the Pokemon usage statistics from Battle Stadium singles, as well as some top players. It also tells you like Pokemon's most common items and natures and Terra types and everything. So really useful information if you are interested in Battle Stadium singles. And something else I want to point out is that I, I think things are starting to settle, but at least in the early stages, there was a lot of fluctuation. So if you check the app, you know, if you check the app, you'll see like the top Pokemon. And then maybe if you check the app again, you know, 24 hours later, things might look a little different. And so I, I checked the app yesterday and then as of today, I checked again and things look pretty, pretty much the same as they were yesterday. So, you know, we are at a point where things are not really shifting too much. So this is kind of like an established meta, but if things do start to shift maybe towards the end of the month or something, I can make another video updating on the, the state of the meta, which is interesting to me. So with that being said, let's go through the top 10 Pokemon here. We have in order from number one to number 10, we have Fluttermane, Dragonite, Ogre Pond, Goldango, Rapid Strike Urshifu, which is the water one, Chen Pao, Ursaluna, Scizor, Porygon 2, and Landorus. So very noticeably and, and importantly, and I guess I would say interestingly, the only Pokemon that is new to Battle Stadium singles in Scarlet and Violet in this list is Porygon 2. Um, obviously, Porygon 2 is not a new Pokemon, but it is new to Scarlet and Violet as of the release of the Indigo Disc DLC. And Porygon 2 is the only Pokemon that has broken in the top 10. As we saw with the kind of honorable mentions, Latios, Primarina, and Archelodon are all Pokemon that are new to Scarlet and Violet with Indigo Disc as well. And they are right on the cusp of the top 10. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Primarina or Latios or even Archelodon ends up ultimately kind of climbing into the top 10 eventually, but for now, the only new Pokemon is Porygon 2. Uh, let's go through it though. I'm not going to spend too much time on some of these because, you know, Fluttermane is, it's the number one Pokemon and that is unsurprising. I, it's really been the number one Pokemon or at least in the top three since it was introduced into the meta. 
And I just don't think that's surprising at all. The most common item is booster energy. Most common, second most common item is choice specs. Most common nature is timid. And interestingly, the most common terra type is fairy. The second most common terra type is actually the new stellar terra type. So that's also interesting to talk about. Stellar terra type, I believe, it does not change your defensive typing, but it boosts all of your moves one time. Um, per battle and I think that makes sense on Fluttermane because Fluttermane is a Pokemon with a massive special attack stat and a massive speed stat so it's faster than almost everything and it has a lot of strong moves that it can use so um, the most common moves it has are Moonblast, Shadow Ball and now Mystical Fire um, and then Pain Split and Power Gem are also close in the number four slot so basically what you do is you terrestrialize into stellar terra type and then your moon blast is boosted your shadow ball is boosted and your you know all, all of your moves are boosted at least once um and so i think stellar does make sense on fluttermane so fluttermane still the king or queen however you want to say it and unsurprisingly yeah it's an amazing pokemon in number two we have dragonite which, uh, you know, an another Pokemon that's dominated the Battle Stadium singles meta in Scarlet and Violet. And it's a Pokemon that's been legal in every single format of Battle Stadium singles since the very beginning of Scarlet and Violet. And it has not, it has, I don't think it's ever dropped below top five. Maybe it has, but the point is Dragonite is amazing. And since the Indigo Disc DLC, or I'm sorry, the Teal Mask DLC, the, the previous DLC, one common moveset for Dragonite is actually Dragon Dance with Scale Shot. So actually the most common item on Dragonite is Loaded Dice. However, Dragonite's a Pokemon with just such versatility, which is why it's one of the best Pokemon, that, you know, you can use so many different items on it. So, you know, Loaded Dice, only 30% of Dragonites hold it, which doesn't sound very high, but again, Dragonite's extremely commonly used. And there's a lot of items you can run. You can run Rocky Helmet, Choice Band, Heavy Duty Boots, Leftovers, Lumberry, and in fact, those are all the items that Dragonite most commonly holds in that order. But it just shows that, you know, with the release of the previous DLC and Dragonite getting access to Scale Shot, that is now Dragonite's most common um, choice for, for, for move sets. Um, Normal is still the most common Dragonite Terra type, which makes sense. However, I think this is a little interesting. Steel is now the second most common. Um, I think there was a point where Fairy was probably the second most common, but Steel makes sense. Defensively, it's a great Terra type for Dragonite, and then offensively, you, you have access to Iron Head, so that's pretty awesome. So Dragonite, I mean, it's just a Pokemon. You can do so many different things with it. It can be tanky, it can be a sweeper, you can run Choice Band, you can run Leftovers. There's just so much you can do with Dragonite. Um, unsurprisingly, it's just one of the best Pokemon still. Then there's Ogre Pond, which is number three. The interesting thing with Ogre Pond to keep in mind is that, of course, there are th there are multiple different forms, and so depending on which item it's holding, um, you know, it it's different. But Fire is by far the most common Ogre Pond Terra, or or, or uh, the most common Ogre Pond set. So the Hearth Flame Mask, which makes it the Fire and Grass type, is at 61% usage, whereas the Wellspring Mask, the Water one. The second most used one is only at 25% usage, so a massive drop off there. Um, and, you know, unsurprisingly, Ivy Cudgel and Horn Leech are very common on Ogre Pond, but Swords Dance and Quick Attack are also the, the third and fourth most common moves on Ogre Pond, so expect to see a lot of Quick Attack. You know, Ogre Pond's an interesting one because it has some coverage like Play Rough, Rock Tomb, Knock Off, but if you don't have those moves, Dragon types tend to give you a really hard time, so. Ogre Pond's still a fantastic Pokemon, and I, I am not surprised by the fact that Fire is the most common mask on it. Number four is Goldango there, and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Goldango because it's another Pokemon that's been very, very good since it was first introduced. Amazing typing, offensively and defensively, great move pool, it just really has everything it needs and its stats are also very good, so Goltango is very scary as well. Then there's Water Urshifu, which is again another Pokemon that has not really faltered since it was introduced. Surging Strikes, Aqua Jet, and Close Combat are easily the most common moves that it has, and then from there U-Turn, Drain Punch, and even Ice Spinner do see a lot of usage. Um, Punching Glove is the most common item, although it's almost tied with Choice Scarf, so 
Um, yeah, Urshifu is still a very scary Pokemon. Then there's Chen Pao, which is, you know, there used to be a point where Chen Pao was, I, I think, in the top three. Obviously, it's dropped a lot since then, but it's still very, very good. It's, it's number six. Uh, most common items actually focus sash, and the second most com common item is choice band, which is interesting. Whereas the most common terror type is electric, so pretty cool stuff. I, I like Chin Pao, but you know it is a Pokemon that you do encounter often, and it is very scary. Then number seven is Ursaluna, Blood Moon Ursaluna, of course. This is another Pokemon that when I see it on the enemy team, I find it really scary uh, because it hits so hard and very, very few things can take hits from it. Like really only steel types. And of course it, it's a ground type as well. So if your steel type is not also a flying type or has levitate, you're going to take a lot of damage one way or the other because ghost types are not immune to its moves. So Ursaluna is just such a scary offensive threat. It's also pretty tanky as well. So it's hard to one hit KO it, which means it's going to do more da like, It's going to hit more moves over the course of the battle and it's just going to keep doing massive damage. So Ursaluna, I think it is very deserving of its spot here. I'm a little surprised. I would guess that it would be a little higher than like even Chien Pao and maybe even Urshifu. But yeah, this just goes to show that, you know, they're all really good Pokemon. Number eight is a Pokemon that I'm a little surprised by, and that is Scizor. Scizor was, I think it was like from, I, I didn't check the stats very often last season, but I think Scizor was like slowly creeping into the top 10, and it's finally broken into the top 10, and it, it's a good Pokemon. It keeps Fluttermane in check because it can one hit KO Fluttermane. It can one hit KO Qian Pao. Um, its typing is amazing. That's the biggest reason for it. Ogre Pond's the only fire type in the top 10 here and it's really the only pokemon that consistently runs fire type moves i mean fluttermane sometimes does but my point is that bug and steel typing is really really good with the only weakness being fire and if the opponent doesn't have access to very many fire moves you're just able to just tank hits all day from a lot of things and deal out a lot of damage so scissor does make a lot of sense to me and again it's i think it's i think the reason it's so high up is because fluttermane is number one and Scizor is great at keeping it in check. Then let's talk about Porygon 2. So Porygon 2, of course, once again, is the only uh, quote unquote new Pokemon in this top 10. So it's the only Pokemon that's good enough to break into the top 10 in this new meta. And I've talked about it before on my channel. I've made some videos in the past, but Porygon 2 is amazing. It's always been very, very good in Battle Stadium singles in, in previous generations because it's so tanky. Like, by default, its defenses are pretty decent, and then when you add in the Eviolite item, which boosts its defenses pretty much by one stage, it ends up being insanely bulky, so it can tank hits for days. Normal is an amazing defensive typing because it's only weak to fighting, so while it has no resistances, it only has one weakness, and so um, you know, against Pokemon that are not hitting that hard, you're able to take hits really, really well. Its most common Terra type is Fairy, which is a Terra type that I often use on my Porygon 2, which resists fighting, of course, and Fairy is yet another very, very good defensive Terra type. Second most common is Poison, which makes a lot of sense as well. That's another type that resists fighting. It gives you different resistances as well, so depending on what you're kind of going up against, Poison can be a very good Terra type for you. And then its third most common terror type is Ghost, which I find to be interesting, maybe on more offensive sets. Um, Shadow Ball is the seventh most used move on Porygon 2, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, depending on what you want your Porygon 2 to handle, you can, there's so many different moves you can have it run. Bold is the most common nature, which is a physical defense Porygon. Um, it has 41% usage, whereas Calm is the second most common with a 26% usage. So people are favoring physically defensive Porygons over specially defensive. And then at 15% usage, we have the Modest Nature. So you can actually also go with somewhat offensive Porygon too. The most common moves, Recover is on 95% of Porygons, almost 96%. So pretty much just about any Porygon you encounter, you should expect it to have Recover, which is pretty annoying because it's already hard to one-hit KO it. And then if they're just going to be recovering off all that damage, it makes it very difficult to take down. Ice Beam is the second most common, uh, common move used. And then Foul Play is actually third. Uh, with Thunder Wave at number four. So the most common Porygon 2 moveset is Recover, Ice Beam, Foul Play, and Thunder Wave, though sometimes people will run Tri-Attack. 
Discharge is number six. I'm a little surprised that Discharge is so low. Only 23% of Porygons use Discharge, so um, I like Discharge. My standard set for Porygon is Recover, Ice Beam, Discharge, and Try Attack. But I guess people are, you know, preferring Thunder Wave, which I think makes some amount of sense as well. So Thunder Wave and Foul Play, that makes a lot of sense. Maybe I'll try that out. But once again, Porygon 2, super versatile, super tanky, great Pokemon. Finally, number 10, we have Landorus T, which is not really surprising if you followed previous generations because <laughs> Landorus T very often was like the best Pokemon in a lot of previous generations. Obviously, this time around, it's been knocked down a little bit. You know, it's, it's more of a physical defense Pokemon, and Fluttermane, the best Pokemon, is a good special attacker. Urshifu is super effective against it, Chien Pao is super effective against it, so I think it makes some sense with Landorus being at number 10, but Landorus is still a very good Pokemon. It can be offensive, it can be defensive, it's got Intimidate, which is a fantastic ability, and it, again, it's very versatile, so you have a lot of options for it. Most common moves are Earthquake, 99% of Landorus have Earthquake. You definitely should have Earthquake. I don't think there's any reason to ever not. U-Turn is the second most used move at 89.8%, so almost 90% of Landorus have U-Turn. And then there's Rock Tomb and Stealth Rock as the third and fourth most used moves. Uh, those also make a lot of sense to me. I mean, Rock Tomb is great because it covers Earthquake decently, but also it lowers the opponent's speed, which can really help. Um, Stealth Rock, pretty self-explanatory. A Terra Blast is the fifth most used moves with 38.9% of Landorus running Terra Blast. And the most common Terra type by far for Landorus is actually Terra Flying, which is a little surprising but, uh, to me. But I think it makes sense too because it gives you a strong offensive flying type move, which Landorus otherwise doesn't have access to. The second most common Terra type, far below the first. So flying, Terra Flying is 54% and Terra Water is only 18%. But water makes a lot of sense as a Terra type for Landorus because you're weak to water, you're weak to ice, and by going Terra water, you now resist those. So that can really shift things uh, pretty significantly. But Landorus, another Pokemon that's amazing. And with that being said, that is the top 10 here. Now, you know, I hope I did a good job of covering this. I know this is kind of a longer video. So if you have any suggestions for how I can improve this type of video, or if there's other things you'd like to see me discuss that have to do with, you know, battling or Pokemon in general, let me know in the comments, but also let me know in the comments what you think about this top 10 list. This is what the meta is looking like right now. Again, if you want more information, feel free to download the Pokemon Home app because that tells you all, like it goes up to like the like 200, the 200th most used Pokemon. So, you know, you can definitely find a lot of Pokemon and it tells you all the moves that they use and everything, which I, I find that to be really interesting. So. That's what the meta's looking like. It's pretty much the same as it's been in the past with Porygon 2 added in, but again, Latios, Archelodon, Primarina are creeping up in the top 10. So those are Pokemon that are, are seeing a lot of usage, just not as much as these other very, very good Pokemon. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please do leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. I really appreciate the support and I hope you all have a wonderful day. You deserve it, and let me know which Pokemon you're enjoying using in BSS Regulation F. I'll see you next time.